Hi everyone, hi Yotunde here. Today, we are diving into the wonderful world of checkboxes in Excel. These little tools are incredibly versatile and can really help streamline your task and make your spreadsheets more interactive. We will cover how to insert checkboxes, link them to cells and use them creatively with functions. Let's get started. All right, let's start with the basics. Imagine we are creating a to-do list for a project. In column A, type task as the header and list out your task underneath it. For example, let's say we have tasks like write report, email team, prepare presentation, and review feedback. I will type status as the header in column B. Select cell B2, which is where you want your first checkbox, and go to the Developer tab. If you don't have the Developer tab displayed for you, right-click on any existing tab in the ribbon and select Customize Ribbon. In the Excel Options dialog box, on the right side, check the box for Developer, then click OK. In the Controls group, click on Insert. Choose the checkbox control from the Form Controls section Click and drag in cell B2 to place your checkbox. With the checkbox placed, you might notice some default text next to it. We don't need that for our to-do list, so let's remove it. Right-click on the checkbox, select Edit Text, and delete the text, leaving just the checkbox. Now, let's add checkboxes to the rest of our task. Here are two quick methods to do this. Using the Fill handle, select the cell with the checkbox, Hover over the lower right corner until you see the fill handle and drag the fill handle down to copy the checkbox to other cells. Another method is the copy and paste method. So click on the checkbox, press Ctrl C to copy it, select the cells where you want the other checkboxes to go, then press Ctrl V to paste them. Next, we want to link each checkbox to a cell so we can track their states. That is, we want to track if it's checked or unchecked. So right click on the first checkbox and select Format Control. In the Format Control dialog box, go to the Control tab. In the Cell Link box, click on the cell you want to link to, say C2, then click OK. Now when you check the box, cell C2 will display true and when unchecked, it will display false. Let's repeat this process for each checkbox linking them to corresponding cells in column C. Now, if you check any of these checkboxes, you have the true value shown for all. And if they are unchecked, we have the false value shown. With our checkboxes linked, let's use them with some functions. First, let's count how many tasks are completed so in cell D1, type task completed as the header title. Then in cell D2, type this formula. This formula counts the number of true values in the range, which corresponds to the number of checked boxes. So as you check off task, this count will be updated in real time. Let's go a step further and calculate completion percentage of our task. So in cell E1, type completion percentage, make that bold. Then in cell E2, type in this formula. This formula divides the number of completed tasks by the total number of tasks, giving you the percentage of tasks completed. So make it look nicer, click on cell E2, go to the Home tab, and select the percentage button in the number group to format it as a percentage. We can also use conditional formatting to visually represent our progress. So select cell E2, go to the Home tab, and click conditional formatting in the Styles group. Choose Data Bars and select a style you like. Let's go right back into the conditional formatting and select Manage Rules. Then click on Edit Rule. Right over here, we can define what we want the bar to look like. So under the minimum, let's change the type to number and have the value set to zero. Under the maximum, we'll also have the type set to number 
and let's have the value increase to 100 or even 1 depending on the number of tasks you have. So click OK and OK again to finalize it. Now as you check off task, the data bars will fail to show your progress. You might not want to see the true or false values in column C. To hide them, you can easily select the column and make the text white. That would make the text color match with the cell color. You can also do this by selecting the cells, right click and choose format cells. In the number tab, select custom and enter three semicolons in the type box, then click OK. This hides the values while keeping the functionality intact. Even though we've hidden the values in the cell, you can still see the true or false values in the formula bar when you click on the cell. To track the tasks that are not completed, we can create a list of remaining items. So in cell F1, type items remaining as the header. Then in cell F2, type in this formula. This formula will display all tasks that are not checked. And if all tasks are completed, it will show all tasks completed. We can also change the color of the task based on their completion. So select the range of tasks in column A, go to the Home tab, click on Conditional Formatting again, and select New Rule. Under the Rule type, choose Use the formula to determine which cells to format. And in the Formula box, type this formula. Click the Format button to choose a color that indicates completion, like green, and click OK. Now, whenever you check the box, the corresponding task in column A will turn green, visually indicating that it's done. I will quickly go ahead to have this formatted to make it all look beautiful. And if you have the need to update the list to add additional tasks, here's how you can do it. Insert new rows below your existing task to make space for new tasks. For example, if you have tasks up to row 6, right click on row 7 and select insert to add a new role. Repeat this process to have more rows added as needed. Then enter any new task in column B below the existing task. For example, I will add this additional task. Select one of the earlier created checkboxes and have it copied down for the other task. But you need to make sure that the checkboxes has the correct reference. This has to be done manually for each one. So right click the checkbox, select format control and make sure it's linked to the corresponding cell in column D. Repeat this process for the other checkboxes. and make sure all the formulas includes the range for the new task. We're going to have this range increased so it covers the new task. Make this 11 because we have a task listed up to rule 11. So I will change this to 11 and this as well. And there you have it. Check boxes can make your to-do list and project trackers in Excel more interactive and visually appealing. From basic to advanced techniques, you now have a variety of tools at your disposal to make the most out of checkboxes. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you did, please consider subscribing for more tips and tricks like this one. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.